Legends, so... There's a lot of... Uh, it gets a little bit Woo! crazy with two Genjis. Hey, BOE, though! And here we go. All right, I'm gonna enjoy in this one. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not relic in this mm -hmm. game yet, but I, that's the one I want to see next series. But this map has like the Hanzo always wins should be like engraved on this map. Like it's somewhere, it's some Easter egg they write on the back of the Immortal's foot or something. If you zoom in really close with the observing uh, controls, maybe you see like the Hanzo always wins. It's not a secret anymore. It's known to all. You've got to prioritize that Hanzo. Stop saying that. I'm winning a lot with my Hanzo. Well, so are Ballistics, Tempest, and KSV Black. To Rhonda, please no. <laughs> well, Dread, Dread like wakes up. He's about to go cast HC North America in maybe like 10 hours. He like wakes up and he hears a Tyrande ban. Wakes up in the middle of the night. He's like, no! <laughs> no, that's not the way you've been. That's not the first one. Think about Garrosh. Maybe. No, yes. Hanzo seems to be the best bet. And uh, just tossing that, tossing that Maev to be banned right after. I think that's an okay one. Ace, knowing if they want to go into the Malfurion route, Hanzo must be banned or taken away. Interesting they would want to ban it. I'd rather see them take a diff the same approach, do Tyrael into the Maev ban, than just take the Hanzo. Maybe they're not confident, which was pretty underperforming on that Hanzo last game, although he did have top siege and hero damage in game. Um. I like that better. You could also ban the now 7 and 0 Anubarak for Hooligan. Maybe it's Gamey's... What Gamey loves to do. He has been playing Mafia Bean only, basically. There it is. If he was when, before in KCB, he was playing lots of Regar, some Stukov, some Uther, and also Lucio. But because of that first pick all the time, they have been losing a lot. It seems like the same... It seems like it's... About the same draft all the time, but it creates a lot more room to flexibility for Ballistics when they have the larger hero pool, a lot more strategy to do in multiple battlegrounds. I mean, Ace, if they keep the same thing, Ballistics, they just have to create multiple answers. This is not a math question here. It's really interesting to me. It feels like Ballistics is trying to play like on hard mode. Just, they're like, no, nah, Genji, they, you didn't ban Tyrael? Well, okay, I'll, I'll grab that. But they could have just taken the easy Hanzo pick. The fact that Ace showed the Hanzo hover, though, in the ban shows a lot of information to Ballistics because it means that they were considering not running it at all. So if you're Ballistics, you're thinking, maybe they don't even want to pick the Hanzo. Maybe we could still get the Hanzo. Also, they weren't that good at the Hanzo last game. They don't even want to play it. So that maybe that's some of the reason why we see the Genji here. It seems to me that SC has really worked to improve his Genji. That has been definitely a priority to him because Genji is always going to be meta, unless some crazy nerf comes through. He's always going to be meta this year. He will always be a top pick. He will always have huge staying power. So instead of just using the Hanzo he's so good at to win against one of the weaker teams, maybe just lock in the Genji despite its availability. Maybe just force yourself to work on this hero in a televised match now. This is probably going to be the Uther ban again, you have to imagine. I think Ace has already made a big mistake in the draft. ETC was n not likely going to be banned or taken away. Tyrael was already already picked for, from Ballistics. So why not just, if you're going into that, it seems like a Medivh pick very likely. Sonya, Malfurion, what pairs are the best? Yeah. Medivh, we have been seeing this pick over and over again. Lots of teams actually picking before the second ban phase, but Ace putting that ETC, I don't think that was necessary. Yeah, yet. why gra draft the ETC when they've already got Hooligan's hero locked in with the Tyrael? Very unlikely that jo in this meta, Jungle will be so laning Tyrael at the top. Not with new Tyrael, not with his level 1 shields, even with the nerf. You want Tyrael in the 4-man where you're going to get more value out of that. So, completely agree. Mismatched here. There's either there's one or two things happening. First of all, first one is the one you just said. It's a mistake over priority of the ETC. I have more reasons. The they second don't even one, have Muther. Yeah. Well, the second one is that maybe they don't know what they want to have for their final picks. That's why they picked the ETC here, and that is even potentially scarier in terms of concept. And we are again going to see this Abathur. Gregor. Same draft, basically, with, but even a little bit scarier because this time they have the Tyrael. And Anub, of course, not available this time. But I think they may just put, pull in another damage source to counter ETC. 
As we talked about a few mages, still possible it is BOE. Will be the final one again. ST is hero for Ballistics. Ace there. Put it to test. They have ETC. We'll be thinking, why did we pick ETC already? When, when we could have actually put in Medivh if we practiced Medivh. Just give me the Hanzo. Or even the Blaze is not that bad. I think when there's a Sank, Bunker could be a very good tool. Is this draft going to be hanzo -less? Is this real life? You have to pick Hanzo here. You have to. Greymane and Hanzo, please. No! <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> well, it's just Tracer Malfurion. No other protection. You guys Did not know, work last time. You guys know when Wolf screams that no. That lots of things, not just one thing, has gone wrong. Well, now... They're gonna grab the Dahaka, but they could have done. They could have actually grabbed something like a, a Johanna. Even I don't know. This is. I I I cannot tell you guys. I cannot say that I think that Ballistics draft is really good, but it's very similar to what they drafted last game. The switch, of course, being the Anubrock and the Tyrael. But the draft on the other side of Ace, when given the ability to play Hanzo, they were just too scared against SC's Genji. They did not, they were unwilling to do it against the potential dive. With Tyrael on the other side and how much stronger Dragon Blades could be, they were just not willing to do it. And Hanzo, we had a game without Hanzo. No involvement, zero involvement in this game. That is incredibly rare. His strongest map. I am a little bit mind blown right now. And this furthers my idea that Ballistics is just trying to avoid playing it right now. I think so. I honestly think so. It was always, ever since Hanzo was available, they really put Hanzo over the Genji. Most of the time, when I say most of the time, I think more than 90% of the time. Even back in Eastern Clash, it, always, it was always Hanzo when they got the chance. I think they're just trying something new with the Avatar tonight. This time, mind build, of course, it is BOE. Yeah, it's BOE. Who's with the pleb horse too, man? He loves that pleb horse. He does. Well, let's see if that Sonya pick really works out. But the Haka, empowered by that the Haka, not the Haka, by Avatar once again will be. Ooh, they're gonna try to rush. This is what I was thinking we were gonna see a lot more of last game. Rush. Yeah, he's gonna die. What, the reason why Rush went to the right, by the way, just to explain this to you guys, he was hoping that maybe uh, the hook would miss somehow and oh. that he would be able to get away and then he would slide down, but... I think he knew that he was dead regardless well, he went, where he, he went yeah. just to gain some time with the Whirlwind, possibly. If he went to the left, obviously he was going to get hooked, so he wanted to go to the right and then Whirlwind, like you say, to buy some time and then maybe Ballistics makes a mistake. But yeah, he definitely knew he was dead. Not a single person in the world was like, yeah, I think he gets out here. That's what you do in the Sonya matchup, man. You gank. They even went Wolf Run on this map, a two-lane map. Good pulse here. Not going to be enough to, to kill a Tyrael, but... It was actually impressive accuracy there. They had good target selection. So it's a kill for a wall. Ballistics got one more minion wave, too, so... That's why they're ahead in experience. Witcher. Going to get blown up. Same with Gamey. This is looking to be a disaster again, potentially. Hey, do you think we have a problem here with the sustain? Not the sustain, burst healing from Ace? It's uh, it's definitely lacking. And when you're getting hit by mm -hmm. Avatar Symbiotes, uh, plus you know, the attack speed, plus Genji's burst, and a Rhaegar, there's that extra bite. There's a lot of burst on, on Ballistics in the early game. And I know that Reddit will tell you that Avatar is a horrible early game hero, only strong in late game, super weak before 10. But Abathur is has been used in Korea since 2015 as an early game gank empowerer, whether it was on the Muradin, on the Tracer, now on the Genji, Raymane in the past, Illidan, very strong at getting early game picks uh, when the other team is just not prepared for it. And now that we have the Dahaka here, mm -hmm. the drag just makes it so much easier. It was actually, we saw a lot of Brightwing Abathur comps in the past because Brightwing would teleport in, you'd see the poly, and, this, and that's even easier to use than a drag, but drag is just about the same here. 
that's what uh, Ballistics is, is going for. That's basically how they have these three kills. The, the Haka Global and the Avatar. Very frustrating to deal with. Ace had a Malfurion paired up with Tracer. It did work a few times in few games in the in the previous week weekends. But I don't think it's working anymore. And there had there has been lots of answers against it first. This time lots of CC. And I think this is a very similar to what we had yesterday. Judy Gunja switching roles. Gaming KCB switching roles. It worked out for the first few games. It seemed like a better idea. But after watching these games, is it still worth the trade when Gamey only plays one support? I would have liked the Hanzo more, G Club. I would have liked the Hanzo more, G Club. <laughs> Why is there no Hanzo in this game? <laughs> They're losing their haste. Of course, I am against a team comp without a support. But I would have liked the Hanzo more. <laughs> I would have liked the Hanzo without, without the Malfurion, like without the support. Just, an ace team. Just pick the Hanzo first, pick Malfurion later. Oh. Or get the Malf get the Hanzo in second rotation. Oh, they're getting wiped. Triple kill. Case if not they had one. Hanzo without the healing, and ETC goes prog rock, looking for that quest. So ETC heals Chico, later. You're, you're, you're reaching here. <laughs> I know, but but Malfurion is not doing anything in this game. And they felt that with pain in game one. I would actually like to see the healing numbers, Rhaegar versus Malfurion right now. Because Malfurion will always have a higher number. Okay, they're not that. They're, you're not that much better than them, SDE. <laughs> like, they're not going to die to the mines. Oh my god, he almost died to the mines. You see that? <laughs> look, at the, look at the health of KCB. <laughs> Alright, so... High health immortal. They've got good poke with Grey Mane at least, so there's that. You can see Hero just on the edge, skirting death here, poking as much as he can. Meanwhile, uh, Abathur is soaking top. Okay, they're gonna dive over this. The root here does not connect. Nicely cancelled by ETC. This, this is a great push. Already a fort. Level and a half lead for Ballistics. They are making this one really work, Abathur. Ooh, Rush going this super is a bait. far oh, again. Oh, he missed the Tongue Dragon. Though. That was a cool mm -hmm. maneuver by Rush. Like He was like, well, I'll just go up to the right. You won't expect that. Can't even blame Jung off for that uh, missed hook there. They want double fort, and they want 10. And you know what? I think they're going to get it, G-Clef. I don't think, I think Ace is going to stop. I think Ballistics is giving us a lot of info that they know how to deal with the Sonya pick that they're not willing to take the Sonya pick because one, maybe they don't want to show before the crazy matchups. Yeah, that's definitely... And two, they on. are also showing that we have answers against that Sonya pick. We can actually have glo two globals, Deaka and Avatar. It's been really cool how many times they've been able to consistently get kills. Mm -hmm. uh, that sh if the drag connects there, that's a kill in the top lane too. Like, they almost got another one. They're trying to have like a showcase it feels like of an exhibition. What they can yeah. do. It does of feel what that they way. can do. Extending to the maximum, not really trying what they used to do, like Hanzo and Taikas all the time. So there's a nickname for ballistics in Korea called the No Fun Five because mm -hmm. they used to be known as L5. For those of you who don't know that, and they have a reputation for only picking strong meta picks. Just the same heroes perfectly. over yeah. and over again. And like that's why you have people like SD <laughs> with like a 16 <laughs> and one. <He's> nice. <laughs> SD has like a 16 and one on the Taikas. Oh. Nah, not gonna happen. Like I said, G Clef, they're not that much worse than Ballistics. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do feel like it it, it does, uh, and I can't, and other, uh, neither of us are actually saying this is true necessarily, but it does feel like this is kind of Ballistics feeling, nah, we don't need Hanzo on this map. Look, we got another strat. Let's, you know, show it to you guys. Then they pick it all three games, and then, like, they go back to their old ways. It's like, oh, they play the same thing every time, even though it's weird. Like, they always do this. <laughs> I don't know, man. Something it's not weird about L5. Ace. Ballistics, of course. And Ace, not really. Even though, even though they're getting the picks, getting the picks that they like, a lot. Ballistics is the better team overall. Even in game two, look at these passive rotations. It's very slow, and they're overcommitting their resource because if they only send one or two, it feels like you're going to lose your member. Yeah. So they're rotating together, not to lose, but. They're falling behind the macro even more by doing that. Basically, if you leave, if you leave someone to go solo soak, Sonya in most cases, mm -hmm. um, 
then they die because e of the globals. ETC is just hiding there on top, like yeah. a Haka. He's gonna probably lock in stage dive, you have to imagine, given how he's playing that right now, but he's Maybe. being careful up there. Okay, here comes another attempted gank. Jonga comes into the side brush here. Rush is slowed. SC goes deep. Tracer blown up there. Not entirely sure how uh, she did not get over the wall. I didn't see if there was a grab there. I think there was more deflect damage than the Genzi damage itself. Yeah, I think that's definitely what happened. I just don't know how she didn't blink over the wall. Hulgan looks like he doesn't have his Q. This is going to be Mosh Pit. So he was up there at the top, but not anymore. Full health immortal, by the way. Twilight Dream can be quite powerful here if used correctly. Ballistics comes over these walls, diving in deep. Okay, Pulse again connecting, but Deflection is going to nullify oh, its damage. But I do it, like I do like the Twilight Dream choice. Yeah. It is the right one Tranquility did help healing that up. up. But they could never turn the team fight over. There was only one good tranquility last game, and they still only got a one for one trade. Yes. Witcher goes down. Double dash. And Genji survives. The good real power one. Slide, but Ancestral gonna connect. Possibly unnecessary, especially because the Sank was used here. This doesn't look perfectly the, the coordinated Haka by Ballistics. Is not even here. Just join to the side. Oh my. Oh, and I he just gets the drag. That. Look at the look at the coordination here from Ballistics. Gets the pull. Everybody turns on KCB. Abathur. Was actually just walking around mid, <laughs> dropping some locusts down. Hello. Yeah, that's happening. Wow. So they're gonna take the camp up here in the top. Mm -hmm. Continue to take map control. Oh boy, there's some mines that hit. <laughs> Game immediately starts checking with his moon fires. <laughs> He's like, oh no, this could be bad. Uh, so essentially what? SDE just did by sitting out in the middle of the map is he sent like two locusts down the lane mm -hmm. from a weird angle. So he's just like, oh, he's out there. We can get him. But actually, he already left. They can't get him. The Jonga dives in. Oh, holy ground. Oh, man. That was a really good face melt. Steal. It's okay if he dies here because he's going to do a lot of damage. But they have to commit to the fight if they care about it. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> it felt like if they were going to let him die for that, they were going to actually commit. He lost the member and. T will actually provides a lots of shields around the target, so I think they were considering that for a second. They also have their own camp, camp to actually use that time. Their top lane is pushing, so maybe not really worth a while. But Hero always, huh? Talking about the Twilight Dream. I think they were expected SC to dash uh -huh. for it, but but it was going to be a kill and a reset, regardless. Very likely. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a weird game, G Clef. You know, we just have to embrace it. We embrace all levels of play here at HGC Korea. Um, remember, Ace was undefeated, by the way, at Open Division. For those who didn't know how they got into this league, they actually have had some fantastic games here in part two. Mm -hmm. Today, though, I feel like after whatever it was, after they lost that first team fight on Sky Temple, they have just not been able to do much to capitalize on advantages. This is one opportunity to grab Hooligan here. Just don't have the mobility to keep up with him. Root here does not connect. Hero wants the pulse, but immediately shut down by the, the uh, Ancestral. Luigan doesn't get the holy ground. jung -ah, fairly low here. She needs more healing. There's no Ancestral available for him. The focus fire for Ace is not good enough to kill him. He gets the drag. No way. Blades out. He's got the burrow. He is finally going to go down here. But this could have been way better for Ace had they actually just targeted him down. It was just, no one was on the same page. Everyone was attacking different heroes there. And Jung-Ah nearly walked out with his life. They get two kills, but the core is only the attack of catapults now. Well, actually, I guess that sentry turret is, because the thing is plugged out. There. Yeah, exactly what happened. And as we saw, we saw that great mosh pit EPC saying, Hey guys, I have two locked in with my greatest CC of all time. But Greymane was too busy. Dragged by the Dehaka. He was shooting at Dahaka, he wasn't shooting at the other targets. Yes. They were all, they all could have shot at Dahaka, they killed the Dahaka to win the fight, or they could have killed the, the ones that were caught in the mosh pit. But if they, if Greymane is hitting a Dahaka and everyone else is hitting you you know the Genji and the Rhaegar, then you know, nobody dies. That's that's a feel that's one of the worst feels that when you play ETC. You have like four men locked in with the mosh pit, and then your entire team is focused firing on the garage and doesn't even kill him. 
And you end up dying right after the mosh pit. I feel like that was kind of like what happened for Ace. They really need to get that focus firing done. But it is very hard against, of course, with lots of things moving around. Especially the double Genji should be a big harass all against Ace all the time. Uh oh. Well, this is a pretty inevitable drag. Okay. Isolation Power on slide. the see. Yeah. Isolation there helps stop the face melt from coming out. Okay, big silence though from the Twilight Dream. It allows him to get the pick onto Jung off before he can heal up. But look at this clone from SDE. Hooligan's going in. Gamey's gonna have to ice block. SC just trying to peel here from Augie. Everyone's gonna collapse in once the kill comes through. Rush gets the stun. Go! Oh, he SC! survived! Gets over, got the stun there, but <laughs> SC had the, the deflection, the one heal, and then the dash out. This is going to be a 26,909, 100% health immortal. Heading to kill the keep and then the core. KCB is going to do what he can to stop these catapults, which are again bugged into the sentry turret because there's so, there's so much of a wave there. SDE is doing this again. Is he, are we going to see a slap with their finish? Please tell me yes. I don't want to hear actually... no fun five ever again. Yes, this is a very hard draft to act against. Ace was really good with the double support, but ever since double support has been out of the meta, they have been having a tough time. They tried it a few times with the Tassadar, but right now with the rule changes even onto KCB and KME, isolation once isolation. again in GCC. Dude, Jungha's killing it today on this Tahaka. He's already on to the next move all the time. Yeah, he is. By the way, Locusts are coming with this push too <laughs> because SDE's just having this just behind them in the lane. All right, still shields on this Immortal, so it's going to have ranged attacks on the core. Top catapults are coming through. Two dead already. SD looking for Gaby. Should have Ice Block, but it's not going to matter. Twilight Dream? Nope, oh, guess he didn't have the Ice Block. Sank here just to secure the core kill. That's going to be the second game going over to Ballistics in what has been by far our most one-sided match this week here. The 2-0 lead. We have to take this series 3-0. 21 kills for Ballistics.